A poultry producer's primary goal should be to keep their birds healthy. In the past, a major external threat to a poultry flock was predators, and when they got through to a flock, they might take a few birds. Today, external threats to a flock have expanded to include foreign animal diseases such as highly pathogenic avian influenza and exotic Newcastle disease. These diseases are common in much of the world, and unlike a predator fox or raccoon, these threats don't stop with just a few birds. The highly contagious and pathogenic nature of these diseases often leads to the loss of an entire flock, either directly to the disease or through efforts to control the disease. Foreign animal diseases are especially threatening to poultry in the United States because they haven't been exposed to such before and thus have no inherent or partial immunity. In addition, domestic diseases such as infectious bronchitis, or IB, infectious laryngotracheitis, or ILT, mycoplasma galoseptacum, or MG, and Merrick's disease, to name a few, are constant threats to the health of American poultry. All of these diseases are like invisible enemies that can strike a flock at any time. And while few of them threaten human health, they can make your birds very sick and can often kill an entire flock. This video focuses on the steps producers can take to protect the health of their birds. The Nebraska Department of Agriculture identifies three key stages in this process. One, protecting your birds. Two, knowing the symptoms. And three, reporting sick birds. Producers can protect their birds and keep them healthy by starting with a robust biosecurity program. Biosecurity is a system aimed at protecting living things from all types of infectious agents viral, bacterial, fungal, or parasitic. We commonly refer to infectious agents as germs. You use biosecurity every day to keep yourself and your family from getting sick. Some of the biosecurity measures you use to do this include washing your hands before you eat, not eating food that is spoiled, washing dishes, refrigerating perishable food, and avoiding contact with sick people. These actions are taken to prevent food poisoning and seasonal diseases such as colds or the flu. While these sicknesses often lead merely to inconvenience or days off from school or work, many of the poultry diseases that threaten your birds can result in the loss of the entire flock. In the simplest terms, biosecurity is a set of actions a producer can take to break the cycle of infection. To understand this cycle, you need to think like a germ. How could or would you gain access to healthy poultry? The cycle of infection starts with a source of germs. As mentioned earlier, germs are the bacteria, viruses, fungi, and parasites that can inflict serious harm to poultry. There are two primary sources of germs that affect poultry. First, there are germs that exist in sick birds or in an intermediary host animal that is not seriously affected by the disease but provides an environment where the germs can survive and multiply. Migratory birds are often host animals for many poultry diseases. For example, wild ducks are common carriers of exotic Newcastle disease, but often don't have clinical symptoms of that disease. The second source for germs is the excretion from sick birds, such as nasal discharge and manure. These excretions mix with litter and soil, eventually producing germ-carrying dust. Step two in the cycle of infection involves the way a germ migrates. Diseases can spread easily through the movement of birds, people, vehicles, equipment, pets, clothing, machinery, feed, insects, and rodents that have been contaminated or infected by the germs. Living things and inanimate objects that carry germs without being infected by them are referred to as carriers. Once a germ is moving either on a carrier or an infected bird, it needs to come in contact with a susceptible species, in this case, healthy poultry. When this happens, the third and last step in the cycle is complete, resulting in the infection of a healthy bird or flock. The cycle of infection can be broken easily by implementing common sense procedures and policies that are both feasible and cost effective for any size poultry operation. The USDA and the Nebraska Department of Agriculture have identified four categories of action a producer can take to increase biosecurity. One, keep your distance. Two, keep it clean. Three, don't haul disease home. And four, don't borrow disease from your neighbor. Keep your distance refers to measures you can take to isolate your birds from germs. For example, control access to birds, post signs to direct people away from your birds, restrict visitors to your birds, require visitors who have been around other poultry within the preceding 48 hours to wear clean clothes and clean their hands and shoes prior to coming in contact with your birds. 
Consider every place your birds have access to as a disease-free or clean zone and control the entry of anything into that zone. Don't let people with pet birds near your birds. Keep pets and wildlife away from your poultry. Implement a pest control program. Have visitors sign in. After visiting a place of higher disease risk, such as bird markets, swap meets, aviaries, pet shops, your neighbor's birds, or even feed stores, be sure to change clothes and clean your shoes and hands before working with your birds. These areas are considered to be of higher disease risk simply because you, the producer, have no control over what happens at these venues and no information about what disease exposures may have occurred. Keep it clean means that anything or anyone entering the clean zone where your poultry live must be cleaned and disinfected before entry. Before handling your birds, wash your hands with soap and water followed by a disinfectant. Tools and equipment should be cleaned and disinfected before being brought into the clean zone around your poultry. Blow your nose and clean your ears before entering your bird's clean zone. Wear clean clothes, clothes that have not been worn around other poultry, when you work with your birds. Clean and disinfect feeders and waters on a regular schedule. If the clean zone is free of birds for a couple of weeks, take that opportunity to thoroughly clean and disinfect the area and equipment, letting it sit unoccupied for at least 10 days after the cleaning and disinfection. Have a boot cleaning station adjacent to your boot disinfectant station. This will prolong the effective life of the disinfectant. Replace the disinfectant in boot washes as soon as it becomes cloudy with manure or soil. If you don't, it could become a reservoir for germs. Just a quick reminder on cleaning and disinfecting boots, equipment, tools, and other items. A disinfectant cannot penetrate mud, manure, litter, or other material adhering to the outside of a surface. To disinfect something, you must first clean its surface to remove all the foreign matter. Scrubbing the surface with soap and water works well for this purpose, and once the item is clean, a disinfectant can then be applied. Without an initial cleaning, disinfection cannot occur regardless of how much disinfectant is used. Don't haul disease home refers to the actions you should take to keep diseases away from your poultry and farm. If you've been around other poultry or poultry producers, change your clothes and clean and disinfect your car. This can be done by stopping by a car wash on the way home and using cloth with disinfectant to wipe down the interior of the car. Also disinfect any equipment you took with you before coming back to your farm. If you take your birds to a fair or exhibition, keep them isolated from your flock for at least two weeks after they return to your farm. Avoid contact with your birds for at least a day after you've been around other birds, especially if you are at high-risk locations such as markets, swap meets, and aviaries. Keep new birds isolated from your flock for at least 30 days. Keep a record of where you and your family have come in contact with other birds or high-risk areas such as markets, swap meets, feed stores, fairs, and aviaries. Don't borrow disease from your neighbor refers to the use of borrowed tools and equipment. Don't share birds, equipment, or feed with other poultry producers. If you need to share equipment, it must be cleaned and disinfected before it returns to your property. If you're wondering where to start with these biosecurity ideas, use the weakest link in the chain rule. Review your current operation and determine where the greatest risk in the cycle of infection exists and start there, implementing procedures and policies that break the cycle. Once the weakest link is addressed, continue attacking the cycle wherever you identify additional risk. Most biosecurity can be implemented quickly and doesn't require a large investment of time or money. Even with the best biosecurity, it's possible for disease to enter a flock. If that happens, it's critical for producers to be able to identify telltale symptoms and understand the process and need for rapid notification of a veterinarian, extension specialist, or other animal health professional. As a producer, you know your birds better than anyone else. You'll be the first to notice unusual behavior or mortality in your flock. These could indicate a significant problem. Unlike a veterinarian, you'll most likely identify symptoms and not specific diseases. It's critical that you rapidly identify the signs and symptoms of serious domestic and foreign poultry diseases. These symptoms may include some or all of the following. One, an unexplained decrease in egg production or soft-shelled or misshapen eggs from a large number of birds in the flock. Two, large numbers of birds off feed and lacking energy. 3. Nasal discharge or coughing and sneezing in a large number of birds in the flock. 4. 
greenish, watery diarrhea in a large number of birds in the flock. Five, listlessness, muscular tremors, lack of coordination, drooping wings, twisting of the head and neck, or complete paralysis. Six, swelling around the head, eyes, comb, wattles, or legs in a large number of birds in a flock. Seven, sudden death in a large number of birds in a flock. Eight, purple discoloration of the wattle, combs, or legs in a large number of birds in a flock. A common theme with many of these critical symptoms is that they involve an unusually large number of birds in a flock. The final and most critical step of the process of protecting a flock involves reporting sick birds. If you observe any of the eight symptoms just described, it's vital that you contact an animal health professional immediately. By doing so, you can get an accurate diagnosis and develop a plan of action before a potential problem gets out of hand. Examples of who you can contact include your veterinarian, your local extension agent, the Nebraska Department of Agriculture's Animal and Plant Health Protection Division at 402-471-2351. If you contact the Nebraska Department of Agriculture, it may send out a veterinary field officer to help. There is no charge for this service. In some areas of the state, it may be challenging to find a veterinarian who deals with poultry. Your local extension agents or other veterinarians in your area can help you find a practitioner who deals with poultry. Convenient sources for locating local veterinarians include other producers, the Yellow Pages, and the Nebraska Veterinary Medical Association website. Having a relationship with a veterinarian is an important aspect of biosecurity. Identifying a veterinarian in advance of a disease outbreak will further protect your flock. Hello, I'm the Deputy State Veterinarian for the Nebraska Department of Agriculture. I want to sincerely thank you for taking the time to watch this video. I hope it's given you some new things to think about and reasons to review some of your existing practices. It's the job of the Nebraska Department of Agriculture, working closely with extension and producers, to both protect and promote agriculture in the state. This video represents one facet of this important job, producer outreach. All poultry production, large or small, operates under the potential of catastrophic disaster. Bad weather often brings on these emergencies, either through massive winter storms, severe heat and drought, or tornadoes. Domestic and foreign poultry diseases can initiate the same magnitude of disaster as seen with extreme weather. As a producer, you can do little to prepare for extreme weather events. However, it is possible for you to build a strong defense against disease through a robust biosecurity program. Ultimately, all of us involved in agriculture are closely tied together. What affects one of us can affect all of us. Even though our farms may not be close together, we frequent the same feed stores, markets, and cafes, and we live in the same communities. Therefore, we share the same risks and threats to our production operations. As agriculture producers, it's our responsibility to not only provide a healthy environment for our birds, but to also engage in practices that prevent threats to our neighbors or our community. Biosecurity does this. It protects our animals, our neighbors, and our communities from the catastrophic impact of disease. Biosecurity is a living process. It may change with the seasons of the year, with the types of poultry we raise, and even with a farm's changing business model. But it's always on duty, protecting our birds. This dynamic system is always open to modification and improvement because there's no biosecurity program that cannot be improved. If you apply the biosecurity ideas presented in this video, they will make a positive difference in assuring that you have healthy birds that are far less likely to die from disease. It's your choice and your responsibility. You are the best protection your birds have.